Okay, rear suspension and brakes. If you haven't watched the first video or did the front suspension, brakes, sway bar, go check that out. We did new fender liners, a whole bunch of projects. Um, this video, we're going to get into the rear. Uh, I think probably the most complicated part is uh, you have to do a little trimming in order to fit the, uh, the bracket for the brakes and uh, getting the strut tower brace. Uh, cutting the carpet is the part I'm most worried about and getting it so I don't cut some big giant hole where it looks stupid, uh, but cutting it so that it looks nice and, and it looks like it's supposed to be there. Uh, and so the way the, the rear suspension is set up is you have a spring perch. We're going to swap out the factory spring for the much smaller but still progressive uh, spring from TC Klein. Uh, the and then there's an adjustable uh, spring uh, spring perch or whatever you, spring collar, uh, so this will attach to the rubber boot on the top and bottom of the of the factory parts. We'll pull the, the factory spring out, and then you have a separate shock. This is a Coney Yellow, part of the TC Klein kit. Uh, one of the problems is that this kit doesn't uh, doesn't have instructions, so I think. What you do is you put a big washer on the top and bottom of this blue and gold assembly uh, and then uh, you put the top nut on and, uh, and then I think we just thread this up through the car. Uh, now it did, does show you that you need to put a bigger washer here uh, when we put the bolt back in to the, uh, I guess the lower control arm or whatever the heck it connects to on the car. So uh, we'll show you how, to, how, how, how I put that in. I don't know if it's right. We'll find out if it makes lots of noise. I've got a new rear sway bar uh, to put in as well. Uh, I've ordered sway bar end links, but they're back ordered until the end of the summer. Uh, so I'll have adjustable sway bar end links in the front and rear, but that'll be later. I also ordered new rear uh, turner lower control arms that won't be here. Uh, and I just ordered, and I'll show you where I made a mistake on the passenger side, uh, but I just ordered the, I forget which uh, bushing it is, uh, but I tore the boot on the bushing by putting the the uh, spring perch bracket back in place. And so I'm going to press those those bushings out and, and redo them on a separate video. Uh, but then we have the Dynan uh, strut tower brace, which will serve a couple of purposes. One, uh, the top bracket gives you a little bit of subframe reinforcement. I checked out my subframe. It looks good. Uh, and I guess not subframe. The uh, what do they call that? The shock tower, not subframe. The shock tower gives you a little bit of reinforcement when this clamps onto this and then hopefully the strut tower brace gives us a little deflection uh, and so that that's another thing we're doing and then we're doing uh, four piston 328 328 millimeter slotted brembo gt kit in the rear uh, that comes with uh, stainless lines and all the hardware but we do need to do some cutting and a little bit of uh, mormon fabrication in order to get this uh get this uh, to work so I've done the passenger side already, largely to make this video a little more palatable. We'll still fumble through it a little bit, uh, but uh, let's get to the back of the car and get working. So let's start by getting the spacer and the brakes apart, and we'll just hang the brake out of the way. You know, since we're doing the brakes, it makes sense to get this as much out of the way as possible while we're working on the suspension. Uh, I've already removed the, I don't know if you need to do this, I just felt like I had a little bit more play in order to get this spring out. Uh, the, the, putting the new spring in is easy because there's, the spring is a lot, a lot shorter, a lot smaller than the factory spring, uh, but getting the spring out isn't so easy. And so I detached the top nut on the sway bar end link right here in order to give me a little bit more play. It was kind of bound up uh, on the, when I was doing the passenger side, but now everything should be, should be pretty loose. Also make sure to disengage the e-brake so that that way this can spin. And um, so I'm gonna take the caliper off here first. I think these were a, this was a 16. Now we do need to do a little cutting of the, this dust boot without taking the e-brake all apart, this or, keep going the dust boot it's a dust shield uh, this one actually this one fits well uh, with the with the new Brembo uh, uh, rotor the rotor is only a little bit bigger than stock 
Uh, and so it does fit well, but we just need to trim it out so that, uh, so that we can fit the bracket in place. Let's see how difficult these things are to remove. Okay, not too bad. Way easier than the front. So these are shot. I mean, the, there's no bump stop left. Uh, so the bump stop is gone. Uh, the rear and front shocks, the stock shocks were, I mean, this car doesn't have a lot of miles on it, and I doubt this thing has seen any track time. It's kind of weird. It's almost like uh, it just sort of rotted away from sitting too much. Everything else is functional. The engine works great. Everything else is fine, with the exception of the shocks were toast. And just like every caliper, there's two bolts. And this one's kind of hard to get to. It's probably not good to break uh, break bolts with your ratcheting wrench, but I'll just get a new one if I have to. <clears throat> So, if you haven't watched the other videos, and you're just here because you're uh, wanting to see how to do a rear suspension on an E36 M3, the reason why this thing is so clean is because I just had the car dry ice. 25 hours of dry ice cleaning from the dry ice wizard. Uh, so the exhaust, everything looks brand spanking new in here. Um, it didn't look like this when I got it. It, it was nice for an E36, but not this nice. Gosh, I see, like I was watching some videos on this when I was stuck trying to figure out how to get the spring out. Like some of these cars, like, it looks like they're from Jurassic Park. Like, it's like one big melted mold of rust. I've never seen anything like it. I'm like, how does this car even drive? These people, why is anybody working on it? I just throw that thing away and get something else. I don't know what you guys are. I understand I'm in Florida, but my gosh, what are you, freaking disaster parts. Not my style. Pads on these have been, clearly been replaced at some point. So let me get a hammer, get this thing off. The uh, rotors have been surprisingly easy to get off, which has been cool. Should have kept my mouth shut. There we go. These are all warped. I've just been throwing them in the trash. I'm not shipping them to you. I'm not keeping them on my floor for six weeks while you're waiting to come and pick them up. So just buy some new ones. So the bracket, this is where it's a little funky here. The bracket, I did, we do need to shave this a little bit in order to get the bracket to fit, um, but I do need to cut this out. I have to go look at exactly how I, look at how I did it. So we do need to do a little bit of modifying. So our bracket here, you can see it hits the piece. So, and if you, if you push it out of the way, then it pushes it into the, ro into the, the rotor. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to snip that off, snip that off. Yeah, what did I do on the other side? Let me take a look, because I did it perfectly on the other side. Oh yeah, look at that. That's like some serious fab work, bro. I don't care who you are. That's good work. No mangling on this car. Only ace craftsmanship, AKA cutting and hoping. <laughs> That's my method, the cut and hope method. I think I actually made a mark on this one. Let's go, let's do this. So put this thing here, snip this out. So, I'll just come right here. God dang, why does it always hit me in the face? What am I doing wrong here, people? Real men, tell me how to do this right without getting destroyed. I think the first step is to wear jeans and not wear some, some girl clothes. Straight. You do that, I think, 
I think I needed to trim that out a little bit too on that side. The same thing here, so we're gonna go. Boom. And then we still need to trim a little bit out. So then in order to get this to, to fit in, I need to, this needs to get sort of die grind it out a little bit here. Pretty good. That's all you really need to do. The other side I had to trim the, let's see if I need to do that on this one too. I think we're gonna be good. I don't think I need to do any shaving of the, of the little knuckle thing. Sweet. So that's all you need to do. Just need to do a little snip, 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 and you're done, just like that. It's amazing how easy things are when you've done it before. You know, like if we, if I, if I did like E36 brakes for a living, it would take you no time at all. But when you're trying to figure it out, it's a whole lot harder. Okay, so now let's take this bottom, bottom bolt off to get this loose. And then we'll take this top bolt. So we don't need our grinders anymore. Let's try to keep this, let's try to keep, keep clean here today. I need to start using my impact sockets and stop messing up my fancy ones. So this one has a nut on the other end that you've got to... So this is the bushing that I damaged on the other side when I put it back together. I just did the... The little boot hit the edge as I'm jacking it up and just ripped it. I mean, it'll be fine for several years, but I'm gonna replace it. If I'm gonna replace that, I might as well replace both of them. So I bought that from Turner, just waiting, waiting for it to come. All right, so this is kind of hanging out of the way. Um, before I get too far ahead of myself, we're gonna change the strut tower or the, um, the sway bar. So I might as well take the sway bar out while I'm doing this and then get the new one positioned. So let's do that, that sway bar real quickly. So the, the factory end link has just a, a, a uh, bushing that you push into. So I think what we do is we take this bolt, slide it through that, that must be it. Again, no instructions, I'm on my own, flying solo here. So let's see, how this go? Yeah, so I must have to push this through the bushing. The only reason I'm doing this is because it's pretty blue instead of black. Gosh, the life of a lift. Without a lift, man, I wouldn't be doing any of this crap. I'd be doing it, but I'd be freaking miserable. All right, so that's already detached. I took the top nut off. Let me take the top nut off of this one too. So there's a nut on the back of this. I love this darn high speed 3 8 ratchet. It's so good. Look at that. We don't need some zinc plating. They're already zinc plated. Just got to get some dry ice to clean it off. And just kind of push this heat shield out of the way for temporarily. I wonder if a grommet puller, my grommet puller would help me. This isn't gonna be very easy, I don't think. <laughs> okay. So, this thing went in like this. That wasn't too bad, I thought that was gonna be terrible. I just think that's gonna go on like that. Did I get lucky and put this one on right? Yeah, what's up bro? Get some. So let me snake this puppy through. I think it'll probably be easier to put these brackets on now. I'm a bit of a sway bar junkie, <laughs> even though even though I don't really use it. I just think they're cool. Makes me feel like I accomplished something. I take these, turn them inside out because we made a huge mess. Come <laughs> on. 
Dang it. How the heck did I do this? I just had it there freaking 10 seconds ago. God dang it. These freaking grommas are garbage. Good old, leave it to good old aftermarket. Do it freaking wrong. It would be simple if the thing wasn't garbage. Like if they split it, yeah, if they split it up on the top middle. So it needs to be at the top of the radius, not at the, not where they put it. This is how I almost impaled myself last time. You kind of need a crowbar to get it out. Well, I got it out without a crowbar before. And try not to rip the car off the lift. <sighs> and try not to knock your face off. Got it. We're gonna reuse these. I wish I would have known I was reusing these. I would have bought some new ones. And I'm just like throwing these things, this suspension away. It's toast. Let me wash these off. And then we'll get into the trunk. Sway bar took freaking two hours longer than I thought. Although it only took us 20 minutes. All right, so the spring, this, the um, collar goes on the flat part of the spring, I think. I would assume so. The little pigtail here pops onto that thingy there. And then this pops in here like that and then since the spring is a lot smaller it's way easier to get into place theoretically <clears throat> and there's the spring god it's like that again all right so that's what we have to do here for now now we gotta get up into the trunk and get the shock out so let's do that so look how pretty the trunk looks now. I had to, uh, I had to do some serious cleaning in this thing. So this took quite a few hours to take apart. Maybe not a few, I'm overestimating here today. Maybe it uh, took a little while to take apart. So I forget where I started. So I took the carpet out and then we gotta pull this little thingy off this plastic cover off so that we can get behind here. Now, I, it didn't look quite this pretty in here. I did some serious vacuuming and I'm gonna leave the spare tire out. I did a, a anti-gravity lithium ion battery, wiped it all down. And um, we also had some melty pieces on the other side. I've been watching a, a few E36 videos and man, do you guys have some freaking ratty cars. Like, take it apart and start cleaning it. Just do a little piece, a little bit at a time. Take a weekend and clean up your freaking dirt trunk. Throw your big gulps in the trash. Start freaking using some Windex. <laughs> you know, for gosh sakes, what's wrong with people? Gosh. This is why I always like to buy a car that's clean from the beginning. And then I can just take it to the next, next cleanliness level. All right, there's nothing there, just a little plastic tray. So we'll wipe that down before we put it back in. Looks like a, I don't think that's mold. It might be mold, look at that. I think it's just uh, dust coming through that carpet piece. But uh, that Dreiss man took mine and cleaned it up. It's gonna look good. The trickiest part about the other side, there's one plug. So there's the gas, tank, little safety switch thingy, whatever the heck that thing is. And then there's one plug that holds it on. And of course it's behind the seat and you can't see it. So I'm freaking yanking on this thing for half an hour until I finally realize I've got to pop the seat off. So this thing, I just reach, pull. And then, uh, See if there's one on the side too. Yeah, there's a little push pin. I screwed up. I put my elbow right here, and I messed that up. So mad. Like I leaned with my elbow on there and freaking jacked it up. Yeah, I bet it'll be hidden, but I know it's there. That's the problem. So I'm telling you, this will drive you nutty. 
you know, find this little this little push pin thingy. It's right here. It's the only one. I don't even know how I found it. I just got so angry. I just started tearing stuff apart. Okay. This, this little guy right here holds everything together. Now it should come out. Should and do are two different things. So you can see why I was saying cutting this carpet is going to be the hardest part. Apparently other than that sway bar. Another part I'm not looking forward to is putting it back in here. While I have this torn apart, we should do our bath now. I might just leave this out until we get our Olin's TTX and all that. And then put it back together. Make it feel race car and lose some weight. Make it fast. There's a factory amp right there. So I might be able to do a powerless head unit. I'm gonna vacuum that out. And I don't see any, no, no issues to the welds. Shouldn't be. So we're safe. So now the shock is gonna drop out the car here when I take this off. So all that just to get to this top. But at least I got everything cleaned up. Got all my big golf cups out of here. Let me do it. You can see the little rubber bushing here is disintegrating. go see you later <laughs> yeah and we don't need to reuse this but look at that there should be more resistance on that yeah garbage car's no longer original it's ruined so let's vacuum this out we should just leave it like that that'd be great nothing like Having all the secret areas clean too, you know? Makes it feel like it's mine. Okay, we can put the shock in. And then we'll start to figure out how we're gonna do that shot tower brace. I need a real man who knows how to use like a tape measure. You know those dudes who like, they should not use a tape measure, like it's like second nature. And they just wham, bam, measure it out and cut the hole in the perfect spot. It never works for me, I can't do that. I already set the shock, so I forgot to mention that. So TC Klein gives us a sheet that gives the recommended um, shock setting. Because once you put this in here, you're going to take the whole interior part to adjust it. So one thing I'm sure a lot of guys do, if you're you know, adjusting all the time, you're going to the track, you probably just cut a big hole in here so you can access it. And so I went to full soft, and then they recommend for the street you go a quarter turn. So I went a half turn instead. Uh, so I'm kind of shooting a gap and you know, just making it up as I go, but I'm going to not put this back together right away. I'm going to drive the car around before I assemble everything. Um, so we'll, I'll be able to you know, tweak, the, tweak the rear and get it set up the way I want, just in time to take the suspension out and redo it again. Something else. This is a, not one of my smartest moves. But man, everything looks, look how clean everything looks. Yeah, and while I have this out of here, I should probably swap the rears and do the bath sound. No. Oh. But for today, let's finish this rear suspension. So since we're set up on the trunk, let's put our strut tower brace on and see what that looks like. It sure does look sturdy though, you know, having that top plate for the strut tower brace. And I never tighten this side at all. The fun part about doing older cars like this is you know this is going to ch completely change the car. Whereas on a you know on a newer car you make some suspension changes. A lot of times it just messes it up. So at least with this mess up, it's going to feel cooler. Okay, so these look at how cool that is. So period correct, being flat edged. 
you know, it's not rounded. I don't know, it just seems right. We got our washers. We got some locking flare nuts. You know, companies always put the Allen key. They should just skip that. Shouldn't be doing this if you don't have a set of Allen keys. That's my two cents. So then this, I would think, should put it this way so you don't see the, or should I put it that way? Now that is right up my alley. That's freaking sick. <laughs> Love that. So I need a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench and that's probably like an eight millimeter. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> this whole car, that is gonna be the coolest part. I love that so much. Don't know why, I just do. Okay, let's put it back up in the air. And let's get our shock put in place. Find out if we're taking that sway bar back off. I'm getting a freaking order on one of these pump ones where I can just immediately. I forgot to mention, you should never let your brake hang from your brake line, but since I'm doing new brake lines, I don't really care. And then this is the part that I messed up. You gotta make sure that this gets guided in properly. Otherwise you cut the boot and then I have to replace it, which I'm going to have to do. Okay, that makes more sense. Now we got plenty of room. Yeah. Now where's the end link? That's what I did. Let's put the end link in here. So, it doesn't look very good, but I'm hoping it all pulls together here in a minute. Come back to that in a minute. Let's put this part, part together. Make sure it doesn't fall apart. Okay, that's in. Take this washer and this bolt. So you put the washer on the outside here, bolt in place. Line it up. Yeah, see now that this is in place, it's not quite as wonky once we tighten it all up. Okay, let's lower it down here. Let's get our top nuts on our... There's a couple of couple of Uggas there. I'm gonna put this 13 mil nut on. I keep forgetting this isn't a giveaway car. Like I don't have to have it like done. Like this, you know what I mean? Like I can like drive around with the suspension and I can buy like a new part. Like I'm having to, I'm like finding myself needing to do it all at once. I'm like, man, I don't have the lower control arms. It's gotta stay on the lift until I get them. Well, it's now 60 pounds lighter. And I'm gonna be 50 pounds lighter, so Maddie performance. All right, let's tighten the sway bar end links now that everything's back in place. So we're gonna put our five mil spacer back on. Yeah, we're on this way. It'll be interesting to see how the spacers work with the with these, with the car lowered. Now, put our caliper in place. So we've got two coats of CarPro de Deluxe or Deluxe on this thing. So 
I always advise her, would never be afraid of doing brakes, especially if you're doing a kit like Brembo. Although, we did need to die grind some stuff. But you saw how easy that is. Brakes on, we're gonna go eat some lunch. I'm freaking starving. And then we'll come and do the brake lines and we're done. Put some brake lines on. Put our cal connect our caliper up and get rid of the stock one here. So first thing I'm gonna do is put the put the fill screw or whatever you call this thing. This is the wrong like that. So you just put a washer on either side. I put another layer, another coat of CarPro Gliss on top of my coating, my two coats of Deluxe. So now that's all done. Okay, that's nice and tight. So now I need a 17 and a 11. So what I'm doing is breaking loose. <clears throat> the line here, but there's two little sections in the rear. I don't know if it's an old, old wives' tale or not, but I think you need some special tools to, like, reprime a brake system if it runs dry. But I might be making that up. Just the brake. Then put our line in place here. Screw it back together nice and easy. Had the same problem on the other side, getting it going straight. This won't freaking go in straight and grab. Come on. If it gives you any kind of resistance before it's like almost all the way in, then it's not all right. Too much slack, or not enough slack on the line to get it straight. Jeez, freaking arms aren't working. Holding them up for 10 straight minutes trying to get this thing going. <clears throat> okay, that's one. We gotta do that all over again. The only thing, the only difference is I gotta do it twice. That's it, end the video, quit. That's it, that's what you get. So we're gonna have, um, I'm not putting the wheels or anything on yet. I'm gonna wait for my brake bleeder to come. I've gotta do the short shifter and uh, I wanna start doing the window trim. So uh, we'll do, we'll probably do the brake bleed and put the wheels on the car and set the ride height in another video. So that's how you do the rear and hopefully you don't have to fight a stuck on bolt. If you got one of those rust buckets like I was talking about, where it's like Jurassic Park under there, where everything is like uh, reached its half-life, uh, then, uh, then yeah, good luck with that. But if you're going to do a nice car, you're still going to have problems like I do. So, see ya. I quit. It's lunchtime. Second lunchtime.